From Cali to Tally, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source, and this is Wake Up War Chant. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! I don't know if we call this like an emergency uh, edition because everything's under control. Life's going to be all right. Uh, we're going to go watch a Super Bowl so we can kind of enjoy it, Corey. We'll have our, our work done for the day, and then we can go be red-blooded American males and watch a Super Bowl. Um, but here we are, uh, recording now and uh, putting it out to you folks who listen to Wake Up War Chant. Use the promo code WARCHANT30 if you're not a member of WARCHANT.com. Uh, to get the latest on Florida State athletics. But an email came down this morning uh, from Florida State's uh, football spokesperson, I guess you could say, uh, via Willie Taggart. He has gone ahead and announced this morning, Sunday morning, that uh, he has dismissed DeAndre Francois from the football program, uh, cited the high standards of conduct that apparently are not being met. Uh, what was your, I guess, your I don't know, instant reaction, Corey, when you – saw that email, heard the news? Um, when I saw it, because uh, I guess we, you know, the 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 Instagram post or whatever it was came out last night, and I, you know, obviously it will make you cringe uh, when you listen to it. And then I thought, I was thinking, I was actually when I woke up this morning on beautiful Super Sunday, I was like, man, it's going to be odd if DeAndre Francois is still a part of this team with that out there. Like there has to, one way or another, there has to be some sort of uh uh, they have to, I don't know, tackle it, to use a football term. They have to figure out a way to address it. And uh, then we got that email, whenever it was, around 1 o'clock that, uh, that he was gone. And, man, it's the, move, it's the only move that could be made. You know, I don't even know that – I don't know that Willie Taggart deserves a pat on the back because I don't know how he could have done anything else. Obviously, that, you know, we're led to believe now that that certainly is DeAndre on the tape um and or the clip whatever you want to call it and if it is you have no, even if he had a impeccable record at Florida State and had done everything perfectly off the field um, and been a 12 and 0 quarterback not to be cynical but that's kind of the nature of the sport if he had been a winner in that that clip gets released and it's verified that it's him you can't have him on your football team but it's just the you know it's it's just another avalanche coming down the mountain of nonsense that's been DeAndre for a, for a while now and literally that was the last the last straw should have been maybe two straws ago but that was the last straw you can't have that guy as a rep representative of your football program and your university anymore I'm so going, it was the right thing to do obviously but I don't know that Willie had much of a choice right uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play the clip uh, that came out on Saturday night. Apparently it was from Francois, either current girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. I think the issue that we uh, were going to perhaps encounter was, was this uh, the previous sort of blow-up or inflagration they had between the two of them, or was this something that happened recently? Um, apparently, I think by Willie Taggart's comments and the statement and, and releasing DeAndre, this is something that's happened uh, in the uh, the apparently the the recent past, I guess you could say. Uh, I would say viewer discretion is advised. I'm going to go ahead and edit out the the naughty stuff probably, but this uh, was a clip that his girlfriend again she posted on Instagram. It's a video, but the way that apparently it looks like it's her phone. Uh, her phone was probably set on a table, and the camera's pointing right up at the ceiling, so you can't see anything except for. At the end of the clip, what appears to maybe be DeAndre Francois' hair, since he has kind of a, a reddish, bleachish, blondish hair that's kind of uh, stands out uh, with his appearance. But I'm going to go ahead and play that right now. I don't want to my f***ing house. Stop hitting me. Damn, f***ing idiot. Stop hitting me in my f***ing face. I don't want to f***ing stop throwing f***ing your house. Oh. What the f*** What, throw it again so I can beat your ass? I don't give a f***. Throw it again. Ooh, stop giving me my. I'm gonna hit you in your face every time. Throw something else. All right. All right. That clip then um, stayed up on the internet on her account for a few hours, but it had been captured and um, you know disseminated on Twitter and everything like that. And then ultimately, uh, the email that Willie sent out it seemed to refer to that. I'm gonna try to pull that up as well right now. 
Um, but the email came here. It said, uh, below is a statement from FSU head coach Willie Taggart. Last night I informed DeAndre Francois, so that would mean uh, Saturday night I informed DeAndre Francois that he is no longer a member of the Florida State football program. As we build a new culture and foundation for FSU football, we have high expectations for all of our student athletes, and we will not shy away from those high standards of conduct. We are moving forward as a program. That was, uh, yeah, you just you can't come back from that kind of stuff. It just, you know, and you mentioned this, the avalanche of things here, Corey. I, I'm going to kind of just go over a, a brief timeline, I guess you could say, of DeAndre Francois' tenure here. So he signs February 4, 2015, starts the season opener in 2016 against Ole Miss, September 5, 2016, uh, starts the opener against Alabama, September 2, 2017, and then subsequently injures his knee and is out for the season. Uh, about two months later, November 18th of 2017, he misses senior day, uh, is not in attendance. He's not at Doe Campbell. He's not at the team facility. He's actually on Snapchat, I think apparently back home in Central Florida or, or elsewhere. Then January 23rd of 18, now Jimbo's gone. Taggart's been on the job for a little bit over more than a month. Uh, a domestic dispute is is uh, responded to by Tallahassee police involving DeAndre and which we assume is, is currently the, the lady who posted the video on Saturday. February 6th of 2018, not even a month after that, if just a week or so after that, uh, Taggart tells Andrea Adelson of ESPN.com that uh, Francois has missed meetings or been late to meetings ever since he got there. Then on April 12th, 2018, he is cited for possession of marijuana. That was two days uh, before the spring game and came after two months of surveillance by law enforcement. But then on August 27th, he was named the starter. And then January 7th of this year, he announced he was coming back. And then February 2nd, the video surfaces. February 3rd, he's kicked off the team. And it's just, you know. It... How did we get here to where we are here? I, I, he... I know the whole fact Tagger said he doesn't care what happened before he got here. That's a problem to me. I think that's a problem. I don't know. I'm, I'm all about fresh starts, clean slates, but there's certain things that, uh, I mean, I understand if you show up late for meetings, that was your sort of thing, or if you maybe had bod, bad, bod, bad body language at practices, that was your sort of MO. I understand that. A kid quarterback misses a, a, a football game. He's not at the actual game with his teammates on senior day, Snapchats, that's not a, obviously something that, that exudes confidence. I understand you have your sit down with him. This is what I expect from you. But within two, three weeks of you know being on the job, you're already sort of observing that he's missed, pra he's missed meetings or he's, he's, he's becoming late at meetings. And then we're talking uh, before the spring game, days before he decided for marijuana possession. And I know it's not a big deal to probably like 75% of the audience in 2019 that a kid – that's 22 years old is smoking pot, but that happens. And in between that, he had the police call to his home with him and his girlfriend. I think he actually uh, started or commenced that phone call. He made the phone call to get her out of his house because it was becoming a big sort of ordeal. But that pattern, at what point do you expect it to break? You know, there's just so many negative habits that people have when it comes to relationships. Those things never change. And to the point that you made about, listen, if he's 12-0, and 0, he's probably still not on this team, but there might be some sort of investigation into it. But this was a kid who at no point in the 2018 season even looked like someone you were going to build something special around. And I guess, again, James Blackman might not be it either, but James Blackman didn't bring any of this to the table. It just It's one of those things I'll never quite understand how much better he could have looked at practice that Willie Taggart's like, I'm at Florida State, I have my dream job, I need to turn this thing around, this is going to be the guy I'm going to pick to be my quarterback. Yeah, I mean, it was a miscalculation. It was, it was com a complete miscalculation on his part. Um, and again, they didn't make a bowl with, with him at quarterback. It's not like they could have been much worse with Blackman. Um, Blackman, you know, again, by all accounts, is a better teammate, uh, maybe a better kid. I mean, we don't know. We, we don't know. We never know any of these kids. He's certainly not as in the spotlight, limelight, whatever you want to call it, like um, Francois is. But, man, look, it's just – it, it's chaos, and I don't. I don't want to sit here and be Doctor Phil and and uh, a spouse on uh, you know a young person's relationship with another young person. And we've all been in 
we've all been around drama and chaos when we're in relationships and you love someone and you don't want to leave them. But that the, obviously that relationship is toxic. And the you, you at some point you have to you have to realize it or you're attracted to it. But whatever the case is, it, it keep when, when one person keeps driving you crazy and I'm talking about both of them then it's good to get away. Like, get away. Go find somebody that makes you healthy and happy. And obvious from that clip, that is not a healthy and happy relationship. And heaven forbid, like, I, I was on Twitter about 30 minutes after the news broke, and then I just had to stop doing it because I was, I don't know if Willie Taggart eventually sent out a mass text to the whole football team and said, hey, get your ass off Twitter and quit tweeting. But all of it is just, you know, so much... About the, you know, just... Were there players from, reacting and tweeting? I didn't see anything. Were there players, players reacting and tweeting and they? saying that people don't know the whole story. You got to watch, uh, you got to watch females. You, you got to get one that tru that you can trust. <laughs> just Jeez. nonsense. Right. And even former players tweeting about, you know, wh why are you, wh how can you be with a girl that provokes you and then records it? That's crazy. Go find somebody else that, that uh, won't, you know, won't turn you in. And it's like, or maybe don't hit people. Don't hit women. Don't be so easily provoked. There, there's, it's just, there was, there was a lot of uh, blame going towards the, the other party in this case and not DeAndre Francois. And I don't understand why he does not earn any of the benefit of the doubt. Uh, he, do, he shouldn't be given any of the benefit of the doubt. And I think this is, it's an awful situation, but it's the best case scenario for Florida State. He needs to be washed away from the program. I hate to speak so uh, forcefully about one player, but he's bad for your culture. Sorry, man. But you it know, took I, this. I, we, this is what it took, though. That there was there was a there was not a pattern of behavior. Before no, that's this. what I'm saying. There, of course, bizarre, there was. I, nobody, no Florida State fans were excited about his Instagram post saying he was coming back. I don't even know if Willie was excited. It, we, we went through 2018 and watched him kind of stumble around as an average quarterback behind a terrible offensive line, granted. Um, all the stuff off the field. Um, and again, all the stuff. It's Obviously, this is a very serious allegation and, uh, and clip. But, you know, uh, tested, having getting pulled over with weed or, you know, missing a team, you know, not being there for senior day. I mean, that those aren't necessarily felonies that it's just not a good look as a teammate but also just the way he interacted with people the way he interacted with us which and you know again we're conduits to the fans if the fans want to know deandre francois he's talking to them through us and he just just had no interest in it anyway just the way he carried himself all of it it just wasn't good for the culture of florida state man not when that's your starting quarterback you can be like that as a d tackle or as a backup safety but when you're the starting quarterback, when you're the face of this program, one of them, I mean, only two coaches get to talk, um, you, it, you, you'd you hope that it would mean more to you to represent the university like that. But anyway, I, I, again, I don't want to get too philosophical on it, but I will say I, I think it's it's the Florida State program got better on Sunday. There, It was untenable. This kid was going to be at spring practice with nobody in the fan base wanting him to win the job. When Willie Taggart said on the first national signing day that he was exploring his options, when many people thought he was looking to transfer, like it, it, it seemed like the whole fan base and the program had already moved on. Like, okay, that's our last year of DeAndre Francois. And then on whatever you said, January 7th, he Instagrams, oh, no, guys, I'm coming back. Aren't you happy? No. Leadership. Cites uh, leadership. You know, Yeah, he has to get better as a leader. And then this happens. And look, we don't know when that was when that video was taken. Does it matter? Does it matter if it was two years ago or yesterday? I th it does. It does because Willie had, we're assuming, laid down expectations after the first situation sure, but that I happened guess, last year. I guess what, what my response would that to be is, man, okay, so maybe that is from the incident two years ago. Why is the woman that you're currently still seeing saying that things are getting that worse. on Instagram? Yeah. And she said, I mean, and she captioned it, I think. I, the way it was uh, disseminated and broadcast, it looked like somebody had recorded their phone while watching uh, this clip. So her caption was cut off. But it did say something about, I've, you know, I've been quiet and I've been in a relationship with him. And it's, I think she said it's actually gotten worse. 
she suffers from postpartum depression, she said, allegedly uh, miscarried. I mean, really just deep stuff that you just don't want to deal with if you're a college football fan. I know that's what I'm saying. And again, I I hate to be callous. I'm not trying to be cold, um, but you don't need that. You don't need that. And more importantly than even that is both of them need to get help. And you would um, you would think get away from each other. That's a thing. Obviously, Taggart, I know. I know Taggart offered the the kind of solution of, hey, listen, how about you move back on campus, be around your teammates more? And I think he went ahead and did that. Willie said that he was pleased with that decision. I mean, I think that might be the extent of what really, what Willie can really do in that situation. I mean, does Willie, being 46 or however old he is, want to sit down with DeAndre and her and be like, listen, you guys got to break up? Does he want to sit no. down and talk to DeAndre like it's the son? Like, you got to break up? He can't do that. I mean, so I, I will give Willie, you know, credit in terms of, his solutions in this sort of uh, problem or this this dilemma were were very limited. He tried, obviously, set expectations, try to get him away from her, move on campus, be close to your teammates, and that's probably the extent of what he can do. Um, but it's just well, and I, you know, and I imagine the conversation might have gone something like, DeAndre, what's that? What's the stuff on Instagram? And he says, Coach, that was X amount of months ago, or that was two years ago. And Willie's first response would have been, I don't care. I don't I care. I, I don't care that. if it was two years ago or if it was last week. Why is it on Instagram? What is going on in your life that that is being broadcast publicly? What are you doing to her? What is going on in your relationship? What is she doing to you that you feel that this is being, I don't need this, DeAndre. Yeah. You know, that's the response. I don't need this. I'm five and seven. People want me fired. I haven't been, I've been here a year. We can't sign any offensive players to come play for us right now. All that stuff. I don't need this, man. So you're gone. You're gone. We we got enough headaches. I got enough problems. I don't need my starting quarterback to be another one. And to hit his, uh, his relationship to be on, on my desk on Sunday morning or Saturday night again. So you're gone. Yeah. Like, and I, I, I mean, that's how my, that's how I would have handled it. And then it would have been a dial tone. Well, they don't. Do they still have dial tones? I guess they don't. No, I wish you kids don't even know how cold it is to get hung up. Yeah, that dial like, tone is something. Ooh. You're like you get interrupted by a dial tone. That's that's. Although I think that's some, dramatic. Doesn't sometimes it go like beep beep? Like when someone hangs up on you on a cell phone. Yeah, yeah, so, but that's. I mean, that almost makes you feel good about things. Right, it's kind of right. cute. A, a dial tone is harsh. Oh. It's like a prison, like a like a jail cell being slammed shut. It's really uh, startling. Right. Uh, so, yeah, man, but at the end of the day, like I said, I, I think Florida State's program got better. Um, I think there are players that were on that team last year that are no longer on the team, which it's an addition by subtraction when you're trying to build a culture, as as Willie Taggart says. I think, again, I you know, hate to bring up old stuff, but it is amazing that Florida State went from J- Jameis Winston to Everett Golson to DeAndre Johnson to Malik Henry to DeAndre Francois with J.J. Costantino thrown in there. It is remarkable yeah. how awful the quarterback recruiting and development and character assessment was of the previous administration at Florida State. It is startling how bad it was. But again, to be positive, I think everybody likes James Blackman. Don't know if he's a great quarterback. I don't think he is. Right. I certainly I'm not sure he's any worse than DeAndre Francois. Exactly. But I think he's somebody that Florida State fans uh will enjoy rooting for. And I think obviously, not to be too callous and make it a football centric point, but um uh, moving forward, you have to imagine James Blackman's gonna be your starter in twenty nineteen. And I think um, you know, that that'll make spring practice. I, I just think that's good for Florida State in spring to not have another stupid quarterback competition. Yeah, so uh, you're not a, are you not a quarterback competition guy. You think there should be a starter? Let him no, go. No, between the between Francois and somebody else for the third time. Yeah, don't need it. Yeah, don't need it. We know who the quarterback competition. We know who the starting quarterback is going to be. Who's going to be his backup? Who's going to be on campus? But moving forward, now we don't have to write for seven months about well, is it going to be Blackman or Francois? Is Francois going to even be here? What is he going to transfer after he graduates? Blah blah blah. No, we don't have to worry about him anymore. Blackman's the quarterback. And now you can you go into 2019 knowing that. And Tamori and Terry is going to put up monster numbers, son. <laughs> monster numbers. Where is he? Bailey Hockman. Should have been patient, Bailey. Stuck around. No Stuck around. One of these guys was going to probably leave. Bail um, Hockman. 
I, yeah, right. I, I think the concern, though, is as we kind of uh, – pivot and, and start landing the plane here and going from the uh, the societal philosophical aspects to to the football depth charts. I mean, I, I guess the concern obviously is that he is going to be the only scholarship quarterback on campus uh, going through spring. I, I guess I mean, even if Jordan Travis is not cleared, can he practice? I should probably look that up. Oh, I would assume he's on, he's on campus, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I assume he can practice. He's just not eligible to play in nineteen. But he's, I mean, he's, he'll be a red shirt essentially. I, I'm, I'm sure he could practice. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's a little bit of a concern. But for you know his frame being dissected every which way about being such a skinny kid, he went through an entire season practically. He played twelve games. In, in 17 and, and didn't miss any time. I, mean, I don't even think he came out of any games because he even got banged up in the middle of any of them. I can't remember at least. Um, I think they gave some burn to JJ like in the bowl game just because. But uh, I mean, I guess that's a little bit of a concern. And this all comes on the backdrop. Again, if this happening, Corey talking about Willie doesn't need this Saturday night. It's the final weekend before signing day. You have a quarterback recruit on campus. Um, junior day is also going on, and junior day isn't just kids from the class of 2021. You've got, or, uh, or for 2020, you've got kids from 2021 and, and even younger than that coming to campus. They're, you know, what people in recruiting call unofficial official visits. I mean, they're getting to see everything about the campus. And then, you know, around dinner time, I'm sure like some of these kids are looking at their phones or looking at Twitter like, yo, what just happened? Apparently, this quarterback here, blah, blah, blah. So, um, bad timing, obviously, but uh, swift justice dealt by Taggart. And I guess this is really now where this is part of where I think Kendall Browse needs to start earning his paycheck on day one here. Like he, he's got to find somebody out there that he thinks he can bring in grad transfer wise that can come in and, and pick up the offense and be somebody who uh, can push Blackman, not to push Blackman out of the picture, but I don't think there's anything wrong with some competition being out there for him. And then ultimately, yeah, if he, if he does maybe get hurt, at least you need some insurance policy uh, rather than, I, I don't know how you know much of an insurance policy Nolan McDonald really is, but um, I guess we'll find that out soon. Well they, have, well, they still have, I mean, I don't know what the odds are of them landing the two kids, but there are still two quarterback recruits they are trying to get to sign with them, right? Yeah, but those kids won't be here until summer. So that's the... Oh, the well, for sure. But I mean, I, the, if one of them signs that you will have a yeah. backup yeah. in August. Yeah. He's just a true freshman, but you will have a backup that I, I assume you think can play. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. That'll be Wednesday. Well, we might get Michael Langston on the program uh, Tuesday to discuss uh, a kind of a preview of what's going on. But yeah, the kid from Mississippi, John Risley, or not John Risley, uh, John Rise Plumley uh, is on campus as we speak on his official visit. Lance Legendre from Louisiana was on campus last week. It looks like it's a Florida State Maryland battle for him. So there are two prospects still out there for Florida State to imagine uh, choosing to Maryland. I, you know, I know that Florida State's had a down year. But imagine choosing Maryland over Florida State. What's that? What's that say about you? Especially when you're from Louisiana. It's not like you're from DC. Yeah. You're going to go from Louisiana, you're going to leave the state anyway. And you'd rather go play at Maryland in the cold ass Big 10. Sorry, that's the second time I've cursed today, folks. I apologize. It's a weekend edition. Yeah. Um uh and I Aslan will go back and uh, bleep it out. Um I forgot you, to you'd write rather down go to Maryland. Yeah. You know Maryland, what I mean? Maryland. Maryland over Florida State, really? All right, man, have fun. Well, Mike Loxley is uh, charismatic. Sure, yeah, and I, I looked at Mike Loxley's record when he was a head coach. Not, not good. great. Yeah, not good. Not great. So, not that you know. Again, Willie Tigers below five hundred two. I get it, but again, he ain't picking between Florida State and Alabama, Florida State and LSU, Florida State and Georgia. It's Florida State and Maryland. All right, man, cool. You gonna you want to go quarterback of that program? As opposed to Florida, then Florida. I know it's it sounds like sour grapes, and it kind of is maybe if he goes to Maryland. But I think that's the one of those deals where you're like, man, we didn't want him anyway. <laughs> what kind of kid would go to Maryland over Florida State? That's nuts. What's Maryland ever won in football ever? Anyway, they made it to the Orange Bowl that one year. Got stopped. Yeah, there you go. That one year. Yeah, that, that one, one year. year. Uh, parting uh, thought as I'm looking at warchant.com again use the promo code warchant30 uh, to get the latest and the greatest and uh, to be able to read all these things but you know one of the thread titles is next last chance you quarterback just announced and I'm sure it's probably poking fun obviously at Francois that would be number would that be number four yeah Malik DeAndre uh, and John Franklin John Franklin yeah that'd be number four another 
uh, you know, I, I hesitate in calling him a quarterback recruit because I do think Jimbo had other plans for him. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, why couldn't he have done that with Lamar Jackson? Yeah. yeah. Hey, you man. Brought, though, you brought John Franklin on campus to his, give him a shot at quarterback. His contributions as scout team quarterback for the BCS national title game, though, cannot be overstated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he got a ring, man. He got a ring. Good for him. Uh, yeah, and Florida State really uh, limited Marshall, right? He, they don't what Auburn score like thirty-one points. Yeah, yeah. First half was pretty ugly, but second half was good. But no, the the thing that's unfortunate for Francois here, if you know, I'm sure there's certain people that don't care. He's I don't know like what his his avenue is now. I mean, because no Division One program is going to take him. I mean, I just I can't find that plausible that anybody would no. take him as a grad transfer. Although I don't know, maybe they'd be like, all right, well, if you're going to come all the way out to I don't know. Uh, BYU. That's that's too far fetched. Uh, Washington <laughs> yeah, State. Imagine yeah. Francois BYU. <laughs> Let's say like Mike Leach brings him over to Washington State. He goes to Pullman. Maybe just because. All right, you're not obviously going to be bringing your girlfriend with you, and not to accuse, no. you know, not to no. blame her of anything. But maybe that's it's just it's hard no. to imagine. He's there's nothing good is going to come for him. Uh, no, out of this he can go. He he can go. Maybe Division Two. Um, or JUCO, or his think, like. What do you, I don't think you need really go JUCO. I mean, you're like. I don't even know. I don't know the kid. rules about yeah. that when you're a grad. If you're about to be a graduate, if you can go. I mean, I assume you can. I, I. It would be odd though. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what his options are, and you know, not to be callous, but I don't really care. Um, he certainly can't blame anyone but himself for for all this. Um, and but yeah, I. I there's a very good chance his his college career is over. And no NFL team is going to bring him in, um, not just because of the red flags character wise, but because of how he played last year. So who knows? I you know I, I really do hope he figures some stuff out. You know he's he's young. He can be a productive member of our society. He is a he is a bright kid. When he wants to talk and be engaging, he's a smart kid. I hope he figures it out. But it, it, it's not going to be on Florida State's dime anymore. And it, and I can't imagine it's on any college football team's dime. Yep. All right. That's it for us. Uh, we're going to go watch the Super Bowl. If you're listening to this in the morning, hopefully it was a good game. Hopefully the Patriots lost. Right, Corey? Yeah, right. I yeah, got- that's what I'm hoping for. So that means that they will, they'll probably win on a last second Hail Mary. All right. I'm going to go place a small wager on the Rams uh, straight up. I'm not even going to play oh. the line on it. I just, right. just go for it. Let's go all in on it. So uh, we'll be back on Tuesday uh, for a show. This is going to act as our Monday show, even if you're listening to this on Sunday afternoon. Uh, he's Corey Amazon. Thanks for listening, folks. Take care. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.